Sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. It's one of my mother's favorite sayings. I've heard it almost daily. But you know she lied. Because words do hurt, and sometimes they hurt more than sticks and stones. Because you'll eventually heal from those wounds. And the wounds that words leave, sometimes they last a lifetime. We carry them with us. They define who we are. They become part of our self-image and the way other people deal with us. I remember growing up, my mother used to introduce me as, this is my son, Harold, oh, he's shy. It was all one word. I used to think the O oh in my middle name was for, oh, he's shy. It took 20 some years and a good therapist to finally explain to me that I really wasn't shy at all. I simply had been never given the permission to be anything but that. What a resurrection experience that one was. Labels hurt. Name calling is devastating. And we use it all the time without thinking. I remember one poor classmate of mine was picking mercilessly on me before class one day and made the mistake of in the middle of his diatribe to call me retarded in front of the special ed teacher. She not only dressed him down, she dressed us all down and gave us a lecture about the use of that word. I don't think any of us ever forgot that. There are times where we're much more conscious about words, and other times we're not. I don't think anybody ever called me retarded after that, but the other names were still there. And who among us in that town didn't think twice about referring to somebody as a dumb Polak or carry a, a full repertoire of good old Polish jokes. I used to comfort myself by saying, you know, I may be called the dumb sweet, but at least I'm not a dumb Polak. You see how words are used to keep others in their place and to remind us that we're just a little better. We use them in gender, sexual orientation, ethnic background, economic status, race. We do it without thinking. Oh, sometimes society puts pressure on us to get it right, to use correct language, and we rebel against that. And sometimes it becomes vogue to use those terms. These last few years, I've heard more of that language than I have in the last few decades. It's disturbing. It doesn't bode well for us as a society. We use them to hurt, to put people in place, and to keep them there. You know, them, whoever they are. But we know who they are. And we like it that they're there and not us. It was true in Jesus' day. And yet we get very disturbed when Jesus acts like a normal Jew. We find that in, especially true in the exchange with the Syrophoenician woman who comes to Jesus to heal her daughter. His response to her, it is not fair to give the children's food to the dogs. What did you say, Jesus? Did we hear that right? You called her a dog? Well, any good first century Palestinian Jew would have said, yeah, keep her down, put her in her place. 
They weren't quite prepared, however, for her snappy comeback. But even the dogs gathered the crumbs under the master's table. You could almost hear Jesus' head snap as God whacks him in the back of it. Son, what did you say? Get it right. This kingdom is for all. Whether you're Jewish or not. Come on. Ah, oh, that's right. You got it. And he heals the daughter. Now Jesus goes back to good old home base to Jewish territory, where it's safe to call people dogs. But he doesn't resort to name calling. Instead, he does another miracle. And as I've said on a number of occasions, miracles in the Gospels are never just miracles. They're used by the Gospel writers in the positions they are to usually make a commentary, kind of a word picture. And this one is no different. He heals the deaf man. It's almost to say, did you hear what I said? She's okay. She's worthy of healing. This kingdom is bigger than you think. It includes the non-Jew. It includes women. Embrace it, my friends. Listen. It's here. This morning, I have the distinct pleasure and honor of baptizing my twin granddaughters, Julie and Rachel. As part of that rite, there is a branding in both senses of the word. They will receive a new name that will define them forever. Child of God. And an accompanying mark, like cattle are branded. But this one is a cross. That they may never forget who and whose they are. They are children of the Heavenly Father. And no one can take that birthright away from them. That is the word that defines. All other names and labels that we will afflict on them over the years matter little. They may hurt, but they cannot change the reality that they are God's children, just as we are. Just as we have been called out of the waters to live together as the children of God, which means we need to watch our words, to be cautious, careful, considerate, and intentional. So the next time you think about that racial slur, or that ethnic joke, or putting down a female or a gay. Think twice. Remember who you are and who they are. We all but gathered the crumbs under God's table. A piece of bread, a sip of wine. The crumbs of healing. of making one out of this broken people, the children of God. Children of the Heavenly Father, safely in His bosom gathered, nestling bird nor star in heaven, such a refuge. Hey,